For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is award-winning hip-hop artist Sia Medani, here to unpack his memoir titled Slika, The Life Story of a Hip-Hop Pioneer. Your memoir reflects the moments and the music that made the man you are. So briefly tell us more, what inspired you to pen this memoir? I was actually sitting with a journalist, a writer, her name is Helena Rimbe. We had an event together and um, and they were talking about music, uh, South African music and the history of it. And they never mentioned Squatter Camp. So she came to me and she said, well, it seems like um, they're they erasing you guys from history. So she was like, uh, you need to write something. I was like, I was reluctant. I was like, who, who writes books anyway, you know? And she said, I can help you write it. Uh, if you're going to help me, I said, okay, cool. And... Um, she then followed up on it and uh, when she followed up on it i'm like okay you're serious so she followed up on it and what we did we started scheduling three hour meetings every week um around this is around maybe 2019 and she'd come to my office and i'd basically like make time talk her through talk her through stories go back sometimes it wouldn't do much because i'd be still finding trying to like uh, authenticate some of my facts because my memory is not the best so it was a thing like that so we kind of wrote it until we were like I think we finished and she basically put it together because without her there is no book basically And how and when did your love for music begin? I think music found me you know um, it must have been the music my father was always playing um, the Clarence Carters the Brooke Bensons the Temptations I mean, all that, you know, but I think for me to proactively get involved in it uh, was uh, maybe when I heard MC Hammer, like this is like 1998, 99, and I think the big song was You Can't Touch This. The, the energy that song had was something that I've never felt before. Um, I, it made me want to, I knew I couldn't sing, but I, I just made me want to perform or or at least I could find a way where I can get involved in music because I was always a huge Michael Jackson fan and um, but I couldn't sing you know and I was stiff so here's this rap guy who, uh, who can dance I can't dance but I can talk on songs and I think that's really where it started and you read that Scotty Camp became so big that the group started tearing each other down and that's when you couldn't carry on with the group so tell us more about the tension in the group and why you decided to cut ties with the group. I think it was more a case of when you, when everyone gets to a certain level of, of success, recognition and rever reverence, we all receive it a different way. You know, we could all have the same vision, but it's when we receive things differently, that's when you start seeing the cracks. So what success could have meant for me never couldn't be the same thing for somebody else, you know. And already that's when you start seeing the cracks because we start listening to people outside who are talking to us, you know. Uh, we start competing with each other uh, subtly, silently, even though it's, it's not there, you know, there's a competition. We, we stop listening to each other, you know. Um, uh, and these things are not done on purpose. They just come with, like, uh, I guess, you know, th that, that new success and reverence. You know, when all you have is yourselves and now it looks like the world wants to embrace you, um, you forget that the true love comes from within and everybody else is just buying into your product until they find the next thing. So I think it was those things that really um, impacted us to, to, to basically go our separate ways. Not, not even, because we never ever deliberately said we're breaking up. We've never broken up. But, you know, you could feel the tension where you guys can't be in the same room for certain things, you know. And talk to us more about the creation of your company, Ventilation Production, and what did you hope to achieve with it? Ventilation Productions, I just knew that, like, uh, that's, a, that's a company that we started around um, 2005 or six. I mean, I started that because I was 
in Bada Bing, but I just felt that like with Bada Bing managing Squatter Camp, um, even when I'm fighting with Squatter Camp or when we were fighting, it will always be like, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it because I'm using Squatter Camp's name. So I had to start something fresh that is not attached to anybody and just, and build from zero. So you must be cognizant of the fact that Squatter Camp is at its prime. And I then decide to start something from zero. It's a bit of a risk, you know. Um, so ventilation was that. What my idea was, how can I create a thing that tells... Um, it's always been an idea for me that that helps artists connect with brands, you know, and and, and an online platform that can tell artists stories. Briefly talk to us more on why the press and the public painted you as a bad guy when you broke up with television presenter Bonang Mateba? I think, you know, the narrative was that I broke up with her on Facebook, which obviously, when, I mean, when the press was asking me those questions, painting, painting me as a bad person, their the narrative was that I broke up with her on Facebook. So I think when you hear that about someone, it it's, makes them seem like a coward, you know, and it's it's almost inappropriate also. So um, even when the press were distributing a story like that, it was it positioned me like I'm a coward. And like, you know, as if I wasn't really like up to facing her in that sense. But uh, but obviously it wasn't it wasn't true. So I think, you know, once they get that reputation out and obviously uh, it, we are in, it, 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 you know, people think it's a man's world. Uh, it's a man's world, I guess, from things that are economical, but in opinion and popularity, it's a woman's world. So the world will obviously side with the woman who's been done wrong by this guy that we've seen you guys together, and then he has the audacity to leave you on Facebook. So, so essentially, the narrative was that it's a Facebook thing, and secondly, um, we are in a world that literally um, will always in will always uh, um, protect the woman from a, an opinion perspective. You know, we still have a lot of work to do in protecting women, and but like from an opinion perspective, the woman will always be will be will always be protected. And obviously, people love the tea of a of a happy story going wrong, right? So they'll go with whatever narrative that sounds like it's, this is the one that will make someone excited when they hear it. And tell us about Lebohang Mutibe, known as Sugar Smacks. What impact did he have on you and your music career? I think Lebo Sugar Smacks, um, we, I met him at, uh, in Leondale. It was at a, it was at a store we were playing games. Uh, I met him there for the first time, um, and our relationship started from there. And I think the ideas I have, he became the guy who believed in the ideas that I had. And he would action, he would have resources and people that could get me things that I couldn't get to be able to achieve this, you know. so whether it was uh, building the studio up, whether it was finding a studio where we can record. I mean, you know, I've, I, I, initiate, I initially put down the money for the studio, but when there was stuff missing, he could, <coughs> he could literally get money. Um, he got money from his father to help us or getting us to the first studio. So Lebo almost became like, um, uh, like a partner. He's like, as like, I'd say, he was my, if I was the yin, he was the yang, you know, and not only was he helping me, but he was also actually um, finding his path and his his journey as a, as an artist, which was going to be in music through me. You know, so it's almost like I had it in my head, and he had the resources to get it together, and and then we'd work together from then on, and that's how we built our relationship. And how did you feel when you found out eight years later that your friend Sugar Smacks? thought that you betrayed him and that you stopped working with him because someone had offered you a big check to work elsewhere, not knowing that you were really sick. 
when we had that conversation there was a sense of relief because uh, I never knew why it's not like we had any animosity but I could always feel something is not right in the years that like we were not working together you know so um I always felt something was not right so when we did kind of have the conversation um it kind of gave me peace you know um so so yeah but all the time before that you know I'd I'd just ask myself why is he being why why would he be funny for certain in certain things I was like I don't expect that you know but I never knew he was carrying this idea that was a incorrect idea of um of what hap- of of what hap- had happened in my life you know and lastly Sia, what are you hoping people take away after reading your book the book is about pivoting you know it's about really following your heart it's about like listening to the energy but i'd like people to a realize that everything takes time you know um and most importantly we sitting here today i i just want to say that you box yourself into what you allow your mind to box yourself into if people just say that you're a rapper you'll just be that but you can be more if your mind believes it and you chase it you know i really hope that people are able to um read my book and and just see an idea this guy starting from leondale um who who just chased his ideas and he never allowed himself to be boxed whether it was me getting into the agency space you know whether it was me even getting into the music space you know all these things were far fetched for me but um i did them you know getting into the clothing space you know speaking to the companies i was speaking to i did these things you know um um and had i thought that like i'm only what people say i am i would never do them so yeah so i think what i'd like people to take is uh, is the fact that you're only going to be as great as where your mind takes you but then when you take the action to follow your mind that's how great you're going to become you know that was sia medane speaking to crema media's polity about slika the story of a hip hop pioneer